All right, everybody, let's get this season underway. Damn it. We do have to change up the lines really quickly. Captains and jerseys as well. Let's do that. The captain of the Toronto Marlies. I don't know who it's going to be, actually. On defense, we'll give Eric Chernock a letter. Who the hell's the captain of this team going to be? Nolan Patrick? I do love me some Nolan Patrick. Let's go Christian Veselin and Captain Nolan Patrick. You'll love to see it. People are going to get big mad at me. for. Oh, hello, menu glitch. We're just starting. Yep, it's I Okay. Love that menu glitch. Love that Danhausen. At the NHL level, Morgan Riley is the captain with Austin Matthews having a letter. And, uh, uh, b -b 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 Dimitro Timoshoff. Why not? Matt Duchesne will be mad. So as we go, best lines, this will be the team for the season. On defense, it is Morgan Riley and Drew Doughty for obvious, obvious reasons. Second pair is Andrew Nielsen and Sammy Niku. The third pair, Roger Carrer with Clint Marata. So I still love that defense, especially now having Riley and Dowdy together. It should be electric. For the forwards, we have Jonathan Huberdu, Matt Duchesne, and Austin Matthews. Second line of Dimitro Timoshoff, Matthew Kachuk, and Jens Lok. Patrick Virta. With Brad Howden and Eric Bristle and Michael Rasmussen alongside Thomas Foster and Carl Grunstrom. We're winning a cup. In the AHL, we have Joe Valeno alongside Mr. John Caffrey and the right wing Lawrence Scott. From there, second line, Dante Hanoun. Hanoun? Hickam bottom, high noon. We also have Christian Veselinen and the captain, Nolan Patrick. The third line kicks off like this with one Harry Garcia, centered by Callie Erickson and Pat Silverthorne. And a fourth line of Alex Overhart, Miko Koivu, and Mike Santarelli. Your defense is Eddie Corbin with the young star, Dale Ruchin. You have Gustav Forsling with, uh, take out Taylor Doherty and get Boyd in there. And then Eric Chernock is with David Kolomatis. And of course, the goaltender at the AHL level, Kata Hat and Justin Pogge. At the NHL level, Ian Scott and Nick McBride. Your 2020, 2021 Toronto Maple Leafs. And we're going to win a cup. We're going to do it. If Drew Doughty isn't enough to get this team over the edge, then damn it, what the hell is? You look at how we compare to Ottawa, for example. I mean, come on. Right? Like, come on. We got this. Look at those ratings. We might be too good to win, but damn it, we're going to win. I'm telling you. This is the year. This is the year. Playoffs were disappointing last year, but... This is the year. It is, it is. It's gonna happen. Rest assured. We're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. I'm just gonna will it into existence. Please, God, let it be true. You better call up Pogi to back up any cup clinching scenario. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Toronto Dallas Cowboys. Well, Ian Scott just hurt his ankle. So guess who's getting called up? It's Justin Pogge. <laughs> that did not take long for Ian Scott to get hurt. 
Pogi and McBride. In on goal, and then we'll have Carter Hart and a veteran fill-in, Rob Mador. Better than Rob M Apartment. As uh, Pogi, you know what? We'll just keep Pogi on the NHL roster, but Ian Scott's coming back in. So congrats to Pogi. Just keep him around for a little bit. Hey, and oof, wow. Okay, yeah, we are crushing it right now. I feel pretty vindicated already. We might not win a cup, but this team is a regular season terror so far this year. We have lost three of our last four because I started to speak positively, but I'm telling you, that idea of Dowdy and Riley together. Granted, yeah, we've lost a few more games here and there, but we got off to a very hot, a very hot start. Very hot. Marley's not so much. 9, 13, and 2. I thought they'd be better. I don't know what I do. The Marlies just can't seem to perform well, even though we have a crazy good team in that regard. 24, 10, and 2. Cooking. Absolutely cooking. In Ontario. My favorite province. Terrio. It's actually not my favorite province. That said, I've actually never, never been to Ontario. I've seen Ontario from the bad side of Niagara Falls, but I haven't been there. Fair enough. Because I fucking went to Niagara Falls when COVID was still a thing, so I couldn't go to the other side. <laughs> One of these days, we'll get to the good side of Ontario. 36-15-2. I mean, we're playoff bound already. We can be 500 for the rest of the season. We're going to kill it. And absolutely crush it from here. Beautiful. Beautiful. Favorite part of Canada is the Maritime of the Atlantic. I mean, my favorite part, well, yes, because it's so close to home. My favorite part of Canada, I mean, that I've seen with my own eyes is probably still BC. I mean, BC is fucking gorgeous. It's just, you know, I don't feel like robbing and, you know, killing and robbing a billionaire to be able to afford to live there. Fuck's sake. Fuck's sake. Yeah, we didn't even have to stop this season. Just straight through. Straight to the playoffs. 50 wins. We're, we're in win now. Playoffs are all that matter mode. As Drew Doughty actually picks up an injury very close to the end of the season, he will be healthy. Yeah, he only missed a game. You only missed a game. You should visit the Northwest Territory. Yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna discover the Northwest Passage all over again. It's gonna be great. Uh Caffrey suffers an injury with the Marlies. 56, 22 and 4 for your Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. The top team in the Eastern Conference, likely the top team in the entirety of the NHL. And we'll be taking on our old friends, the Florida Panthers, in round number one. This is what we did. This is what we did. This is how we did. As we look at the goaltender, Pogi. A lot of performance by Pogi. Ian Scott had a 930. I think auto rotate was off again. McBride had a 908. Yeah, Ian Scott was insane, frankly. Absolutely insane. Um, with a 931. That might be Vesna worthy. Defensively, oh baby. There it is. There it is. Morgan Riley and Drew Dowdy together. Plus 38 and a plus 32. I know we gave up a lot to make it happen. You had Nielsen on 19 points. Murata's up to an 85, which is nuts. Carer's up to an 84. Niku's at an 86. And then Derek Forbert only played one game. So our lowest rated defenseman right now is an 84. Insane. If we look at the forwards, 77 points for the franchise. Jonathan Huberto. And in general, you can tell we have scoring across the board. Duchesne had 65 points. Matthews, his offense suffered a bit from sharing the puck with Huberto. He was still second on the team in goals, though. Eric Bristle got better. Kachuk. The overalls for our team right now are insane. We should have 
the proper amount of depth for anybody to step up at any given time. Uh, the AHL team, by the way, not looking too great in terms of playoff viability. They're actually not going to make it, but I imagine we got some good development from the boys. But let's take a look here. It was Jonathan Druen, Steven Stamkos at the top of the board. You also had Ryan Johansson, Tyler Sagan, and a couple of players tied on 77 points, including Jonathan Huberto. Top goal scorer with 43 was Sagan. Then you had Tarasenko, Stamkos, Tavares, and Patrick Kane. Defensively, in terms of points, who else would it be? Morgan Riley has likely won back-to-back -back Norris trophies. You also had Eric Carlson, Nick Letty, Roman Yossi, and Oliver ekman Larson up there. Drew Doughty just outside of the top five. Sergei Nikulin as well. Looks like he got a point better, but again, that potential is still low. Um, I don't necessarily regret trading Dowdy for Nikulin. I'm surprised Nikulin put up points like that, but I mean, he basically took over Drew Dowdy's spot. Goalie wise, a couple of points for Stolars. No goals. In terms of save percentage among starters, at least, you're looking at Jack Campbell, Ian Scott. Hope he's not that far off. There were some damn good goalies this year, but Ian Scott's very much in the mix. And for the rookie race, looks like Tim Gettinger could win the Calder. If not, Eric Bristle, uh, Gord Cope, and Seethe, Brad Morrison, and Jacopaka. Who doesn't love Jacopaka? Tremendous stuff. Tremendous. Gord Copium. Indeed. Yeah, we have made the playoffs again. Look at the ratings on this team. There's no denying this team can win a cup. Whether or not they do, hey, it depends on the sim. But this team could absolutely win a Stanley Cup. I mean, there is a frankly absurd amount of talent on this roster. I mean, even, even in goal with a 91 overall, Ian Scott, you know? Good things could be happening. It could be. We're going to save really quickly, but we are immediately going to get into this matchup with the Florida Panthers in round number one. We want Florida. Will that come back to haunt us again? It still sucks I can't look at their lines, but I can look at their roster. Let's see what the Florida Panthers are looking like here in 20. 21. The answer. In goal, Benjamin Bishop at 34 years old. So you got Ben Bishop here. Defensively, Ekblad, Muzzin, Kulikov, Matheson, Goodbranson, and Cole. That's, that's pretty damn good. Mm. And at forward, Barkoff, Bjugstad, Turris. Hansel, Riley Smith, Paul Stashney, Kraus, Steele, Rao, Howerluck, Lamico, Tobias Lindbergh, Dennis Mulgan, dude named Kuhleman, Kyler or Keanu? Keanu Yamamoto. Rounding out that lineup. It's not bad. That, that's actually a pretty damn good team. Imagine if they still had Huberto. It would be looking that much worse for us. In terms of the ratings, better offense, better defense, better goaltending, better pizza, Papa John's. We are undoubtedly the favorites in this series. Again, a 56-win season, which saw us have the best record in the NHL. My goodness. This is our time. This is our time by God. Game number one against the Battle Cats. That should have been their name. It would have been dope. Let's see how it goes. First period. Oh, nothing. Austin Mathus. Second period. Still one nothing from Austin Matthews. I'm going to play 16. I tried it out last Thursday. Um, I might at a certain point. I mean, typically I don't do much gameplay-wise. You guys know that. Ooh, Tobias Lindbergh scores. Um, we have watched the gameplay, though. It's actually looked really good, so it's 
been entertaining to uh, at least watch these playoff games. Seven minutes to go. We are tied. Just one goal so far on Ben Bishop. Despite heavily outplaying them. That's a bit scary. We're going to overtime in game number one. We went to overtime so many times last season. Again, if, unless it's an elimination game or close to it, we don't jump in. As we get goalied by Ben Bishop, Yuho Lamico wins it in overtime. Not a great start. Not a great start. Damn. Jelson, what's up? And uh, again, I'm kind of waiting for post-launch kinks to be worked out. I'm going to go to game number two. I'm not going to change anything about the lineups just yet. Even though maybe I should. First period. Goal apiece. Aaron Eckblad and Eric Bristle. Give me outshot him, too. Second period. Oh, baby. Brett Howden, Riley Smith, but Carl Grundstrom has given us the lead. But yeah, Chelsea, I was explaining it to people earlier. We had a humane run at the start of FHM 9, and the game glitched, and I literally lost like three or four seasons worth of progress, and then it just got so frustrated, I just never ended up going back to it. So, I'd like to avoid that situation. Stashney tied it up. Carrer. 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 We're fucking vroom vrooming our way down to Florida with a tied series. 4-3. The final score. They kept it much closer this time. I mean, granted, they won an overtime previously, but we were never, like, dominating the game. We survive a close one. And tie the series up at one apiece. It's a best of five now. Game number three. Game number three. Again, not going to change anything about the Lions. This team should be good enough. Right? We shouldn't have to freaking mix and match here. First period. Yes. Foster and Duchesne doubled them up in shots. Have them doubled up on the board. Second period. Well, we blew a 2 nothing lead, but Austin Matthews has put us back up by one. Goals from Kyle Rao and Nick Bjugstad. All right. Third period up by one. Never mind. We're tied again. Kyle Turris. Yeah, Chilson, they couldn't even fix the file. It was that, like, glitched out for me. So. Ah, uh, Wheels, that's up to Crash Andrews. <laughs> He's got a busy work schedule lately. We're going to overtime in game three. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And for the second time in the series, the Panthers win in overtime. 4-3 off of a goal from Dennis Morgan. And the Panthers are up 2-1. Not great. Both of our losses in overtime. Every game has been a one-goal game, obviously. We are going to take a look at the Lions here. First and foremost, Ian Scott and goal. Not good enough. McBride's coming in. Defensively, Dowdy and Riley have gotten ripped to shreds. But we do have a team that's prepared. It'll be Andrew Nielsen with Morgan Riley, Sammy Niku with Drew Dowdy. And then for the forwards, not the best from the top line, not the best from the second line, not the best from the third line. <laughs> oh my God. Right. Well. I 
Eric Bristle almost won the Calder. We'll put him on the top line. He might still win the Calder. We'll put Matthews on the second line with Kachuk and Locke. And then Timishoff with Howden and Patrick Virta. Spread the wealth a little bit. Try some different things. Game number four. We lose this one. We are in deep, deep to do. So let's not lose this one. First period, 2 nothing. Leafs. Huberto and Dimitro Timishoff. Please don't blow the lead this time. Second period. Thank you. Jens Luke, Jens Locke, whatever you prefer. Matt Duchesne. It's four. I would like to think this game is over. Please, God, let this game be over. Please, please, please. Let this game be over. Sam Steele scored. But thankfully, McBride's able to shut the door from there. 4-1, your final score. And the Leafs have tied the series again. Thanks to the excellency in the postseason of one Nick McBride and Phantom Hex. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome. Massive spoilers. We're up to NHL 16 now and massive spoilers for that. But how are you? Hope you're good. All right. 2-2, two, two, first round against the Cats. We have... Such a ridiculous team. Turns out auto-rotate is on. So McBride's back in for game five. Can we finally take a lead in this series? First period. Goalless. Doubled him up at shots. We cannot get goalied by Ben Bishop here. Please. Please don't get goalied. Up one nothing. Morgan Riley, the captain, gives us the lead. I have a hunch we're going to need at least a second goal. Maybe a third. Ten minutes to go. Can McBride hold them off? Will we have a chance to end the series in game six back in Florida? Hulk, I already know what it is. I'm not doing it. <laughs> a 24 save shutout for the playoff goat, Nick McBride. Although he hasn't often been the GOAT in series clinching situations, but we are one win away from the second round yet again. That is if we can survive, as McBride has, uh, needless to say, been vastly superior. Vastly. Andre Vastl Vastly Levski. Game number six. Can we make it out of the first round? It is Toronto, after all. First period. 3-1. Timishoff and Steele, but then it's the former cat, Jonathan Huberto, and Jens Locke one more time. Second period. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Canadian, what's going on? I am very well. How are you? I'm as well as I can be with my Toronto Maple Leafs having a 4-1 lead. A chance to close out the series and move on to round two. We're halfway home. Hold the door. Hold the door. The Toronto Maple Leafs, your president's trophy winners, are moving on to round number two. You'd love to see it. 5-1 in Game 6. Our only two losses of the series were in overtime as we battled back Nick McBride. Needless to say, we're going to go ahead and turn off auto-rotate because Nick McBride is the man. He has earned the crease yet again for the Leafs here. I mean, look at this. Look at that stat line over three games compared to the three appearances from Ian Scott. Ian Scott had a 931 save percentage in the regular season. Did not matter. But thankfully, we made the right play at the right time in terms of swapping goaltenders, and Nick McBride was able to shut the door, and we are moving on. Thank God. Canadian, glad to hear it, by the way. Let's take a look. In terms of points, it was Morgan Riley. 
Riley, Matthews, Duchesne. Look at the scoring across the board, basically. Rasmussen, Niku, the only two players without points. You hate to see Brett Howden with just one point. He needs to be better than that. But, mm, my Leafs fan. I am not. I am the opposite. I am a Bruins fan. All right. Round one in the books. I do have a soft spot for the Leafs, though. Who is it going to be in round two? Of course, of course, of course. The Boston Bruins. Well, we know what our lineup looks like. The big question is, what do the Bruins look like in spring of 2021? Let's find out. Again, we have to look from the contract screen. We get past the Panthers. Can we get past the Bruins who look like this in goal? Oh, my God. Tuka Rask and Malcolm Subban. Whew. Defensively, Brandon Carlo, Jared Cowan. I'm just, I'm seeing, Elisa, that's very weird that she's seeing the only currently offline screen. Someone tell her that we're here. I don't know why she typed it if she know I can't respond. Jared Cowan, Jake Gardner, a couple former Leafs, Luke Green, Tory Krug, Jakob Zaborl, and Jeremy Lozon, whose names I said out of order, but that's okay. Wow. At forward, Patrice Bergeron. Also, David Krejci, Nino Niederreiter, Brad Marchand, David Posternock, Bergeron. Uh, I believe that's Auntie Sorella. It's Alexi. Fair enough. Jake DeBrusque, David Perron, Cal Clutterbuck, Seth Griffith. I don't know who this is. Lou Bates. Generated dude. Ben Smith, another former Leaf. Louis Erickson and Frank the Tank Vetrano. That's a pretty well-rounded team. They don't have an outright superstar like we do. And we have a couple of them that are 90-plus right now, but I don't put it past them to be able to win this series, right? Not at all. Not at all. We look at the ratings comparing the two teams. We have them beat everywhere on paper except for goaltending. Technically, our goaltending would be better as well if we were running with Ian Scott. But as we learned in that first round series, that is not necessarily the smartest idea. And uh, as such, we're not going to do it. Lou Bates sounds like the guy who was saying Mambo number four. I, I get the reference crash. Well done. You're, you're representing boomers everywhere. Myself included because I understood the reference. So there you go. We're proud of you. Game number one against the Boston Bruins. We accidentally sim the first period where David Krejci scores the lone goal of the opening 20 minutes. Second period. A David Krejci hat trick. Drew Doughty has our lone goal so far. Balls. Balls. <sighs> Not a great start to this series. Uh, Haruka, that might be correct, actually. You might actually be able to do it that way. I forgot that was the method. That might not have been this game. That might have been 17, but I can check in a minute. Someone on the someone eventually on the YouTube comments will yell at me from something that we streamed five days ago. So that'll be fun. The Boston Bruins... <sighs> Take game one. 4 1. We did lose game one of the prior series as well. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Not great. We'll keep the team the same for game two, but if we lose this one, we're going to have to make some panic changes for sure. First period, one goal apiece, Jake DeBrusque and Carl Grundstrom. 
Second period. Okay, we have the lead. Matt Duchesne scores. Pasta ties it. Jens Locke scores again. <sighs> okay. Streamer, the correct way to do that was this. This was streamed seven months ago, basically. Basically. Happy New Year, everybody. There's a good chance. There's a good chance. Still up by one. Power play. Nothing happening. Close, close game against the Bruins. Three minutes to go. <sighs> Thank God. The Leafs hold on. And take game two, three to two, the final score, as Nick McBride returns to form. Thank God. <laughs> I'll text. What's up, man? All right. A 1-1 one, one series at this stage. Oh, Crash. The, the, the best ones are, are comments from videos from years ago. Those are my favorite. Those are my favorite. Aside from the, the woke soy boy cuck, th those ones are pretty good. But those other ones on videos from years ago, those are those are always fun. For sure. Game number three. Game number three. First period. 2-1 Leafs. Rasmussen and Huberdo with David Perron getting the goal for the Bruins. Not bad. Columbus's arena was pretty nice. Nationwide's a top NHL stadium. It's a shame they don't have a top NHL team. Boy, it's almost like karma came around to smack the Blue Jackets in the face. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't it beautiful? Second period. Well, there's my karma, apparently. Jake DeBrusk, Tory Krug, and two goals for Ben Smith. And we're down 5-2. Hurtful. Truth, though, Chilson. It's the truth. It is the truth. Oh, boy. Well, Nick McBride. Maybe not quite dominant like we need him to be. Ian Scott's in. He allows a goal. And the Bruins are going to take a 2-1 series lead. This is very, very similar to what we had seen in the Panthers series. Why did Karma hit the Blue Jackets? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Schmike Schmabcock. <laughs> 6 2, the final score. What a game for Ben Smith. What a game for Jake Gardner on a team that appreciates him with a fan base that appreciates him. Yeah, we're down 2 1 in this series. Hmm. I mean, McBride's still our best option here. <sighs> Drew Doughty has had a really, really rough postseason, hasn't he? He has had a really rough postseason. Not that Niku's been much better. We need Matthew Kachuk to start scoring. That third line has been nearly non-existent. I don't really know what to do to wake them up. What if we go Locke, Matthews, Timishoff, Veer to Howden, Kachuk. Just again, try something different. Try to spark the team a little bit. It's game number four, a game we cannot afford to lose. First period, goalless. That's probably not a good thing. Second period, there we go. Jonathan Huberto and the Bristle. We're up two. Thanks to two goals from the top line. I was Riley a 99 and Huberto a 98 because magic beans. And that's just how this game worked at the time. And it's beautiful and it's gorgeous. Damn it. Bristle scores again. And the Maple Leafs, just like they did against the Panthers, are going to tie up the series in game number four. A 27 save shot out. 
for Nick McBride. The GOAT in this series is tied. You love to see it. Game five is massive, though. It's a best of three from this point on. First period of game number five. Two nothing Leafs. Carl Grundstrom and Jens Locke. Love to see it. Jens has been insane this postseason so far. Second period, still 2 0. As we go to the third, can we do to the Bruins what we did? For the Panthers, David Perron gets them to within one. Matt Duchesne gets it back. Up 3-1. Up 3-1. The Toronto Maple Leafs. One win away from another trip to the Eastern Conference Final. Another or the first in forever? I don't remember if we made the Eastern Conference Final last time. Morgan Riley, a tremendous game. McBride as well. Very, very, very good. One win away from knocking out the Bruins. Can we do it in game six? Can we do it? Lineup stays the same. First period, one nothing Leafs. The captain, Morgan, 99 overall, Riley. Second period, still one nothing. 20 minutes away, perhaps, from ending this series in six, Austin Matthews. Come on. Come on. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Another series win in six games. This time over the Boston Bruins, Nick McBride. Picture perfect again. And the President's Trophy winning Leafs are going all the way to the Eastern Conference Final. As we get a look here, Bristle, Riley, Duchesne, Huberto. Leading the way, but we are getting some good secondary scoring for the most part. Still a little bit worried about Brett Howden, averaging a point per series, but it is what it is. But the story here is in goal. Nick McBride, three shutouts in nine appearances, 7-2-0, and oh, with a 947 save percentage and a 1.5 goals against average. We go as far as Nick McBride carries us. I love him.